everyone to district divided dc sports podcast more specifically a washington commanders podcast i am amit that is kdot before we begin the preview episode at the new england patriots our commanders are headed over there to take them on this sunday at 1 p.m if you enjoy today's video please subscribe to the channel please like the video comment on the video as you always do hit the notification bell and kdot Share this shit. Share this shit, please. We would also like to grow just a little bit. But in the meanwhile, why don't we go ahead and jump into it? We begin with the p- preview, excuse me, of the New England Patriots, how they've done so far this 2023 season. We're then going to talk about the commander's defense. No longer has Chase Young. No longer has Montez Sweat against this Patriots offense that has been anemic so far. And then we flip sides of the ball our commander's offense off a pretty nice game against the Philadelphia Eagles with Sam Howell at the helm against this Patriots defense. We then get to our predictions as we always do the comment mail bag after the pod. Why don't we go ahead and begin the new England Patriots this season, two and six, not a good record, not Patriot football, not the Patriot way, not what they're used to bill Belichick still over there, believe it or not with a two and six record. I'm going to go ahead and show you who all they've lost to or tell you who all they've lost to. So they've lost to the Philadelphia Eagles in their opener. They've lost to Miami twice. They've lost to the Dallas Cowboys. They've lost to the New Orleans Saints, and they've lost to the Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders in particular, pretty bad loss was on the road. There are two victories against the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. Dot, what do you make of this 2023 New England Patriots squad? Well, um, first and foremost, shout out to Mike Florio. I guess Bill Belichick will be our head coach next year. So and Johnny Consor, who mentioned that about a month ago. Please continue. It's not gonna happen. Um, the <laughs> well, the New England Patriots have been a bit of a mess, right? But so like there's a there was an element or a conversation was kind of happening early on this season, which is did Bill lose it? Is it is it just over? And the conversation as far as the legacy stuff about him and Tom Brady, all kinds of stuff, it's just been a shit show. Um, and but if you look at them like overall, I don't think they're too dissimilar to us, even though they've gotten their different ways. Um, they've been a mess. They have not. They've lacked any sort of consistency. If I look at that, if those list of opponents, they're not. It's not like they've. They're pretty good opponents. I mean, the the Eagles, Dolphins twice. Like as not- good a six loss team as you could have it's weird like six losses is six losses but like it's a decent quality of opponent there it's a good slate outside of the Raiders loss you can't really say okay the Saints always have a feisty defense you never know who's gonna fucking show up um we still haven't played the Cowboys not once and the Lord knows how that's gonna fucking go right um and then they get the win against the Jets who have a stellar defense and it's an individual uh, inner division game On the and road. then they have a huge win against buffalo you saw what we did against buffalo didn't look fucking good right so like they're coming off of a fairly good performance in buffalo but then they have the miami game um where miami is just clearly a better team but even in that game like no nah, you know there's not a whole lot of positive i can say <laughs> i was trying to give us credit there's not a lot there's just sure. a bit of a mess the offense unlike us whose offense has been clicking i'd say they're like the the inverse of us their offense has been ma- a mess Yes. Um, you you don't really look for anybody on that offense and say, oh, well, they, they scare me. But defensively, I mean, top 10 in yards, not necessarily in pa- in points. They're the damn near last in the league in points. Um, it's just a mess. And if you look at Washington, look, we've been able to throw up some points when we needed to. You talk mm-hmm. about the Philadelphia game. But then defensively, we've been a fucking sieve. So messy. You get two teams that are just a bit of a mess. And you're not sure who's going to show up in it. So in that case, why don't we go ahead? Because you talked about the defense being. I said, why don't we go ahead and talk about that commander's defense against this Patriots offense? Which one's going to give, right? You know, normally you have the unstoppable force and the immovable object. You have a very movable object and a very stoppable force. Like this is what's going on right now. Both sides of the ball for these, for the Patriots, for the commanders on this end, not good. So we lose Chase Young. We lose Montez Sweat. What are your expectations for the commander's defense this Sunday? 
I don't know. <laughs> like the thing is that the more and more that time has gone since the trade itself, and the mm-hmm. more and more that people are talking, more and more you hear from the reporters, the more and more you there is a narrative that's kind of being taken where Montez Sweat. You get rid of him in the sense of the value was just too high. You didn't think he was probably going to come back. You make the trade, whatever. The Chase Young thing feels more like, and we've heard this term that a lot of people use, addition by subtraction. I actually think in some in some cases within that locker room, within that coaching staff, they might actually think they get they're getting better without Chase Young being there. Now that being said, the 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 bar is mad low, right? So like. The, right. the idea that, okay, how much better could we be? But how much worse could we be? I mean, I, Lord knows no one really wants to have the answer to that. But I think that, that we just don't know right now, right? Because Chase Young, if any, if you look at any of the statistics on PFF, if you trust them, whatever, he's been fairly high. Do you think that that lack of production would be an issue? But then you look at that Philadelphia game, he was sort of, he was sort of invisible anyway. So. Right. I just think if I'm looking at the commander's defense and how they respond to losing what's supposed to be the face of the defense, even though he never really was probably the the loud voice, but not the true locker room. He's not John Allen. He's not Deron Payne as far as that, like, quiet, silent leader. Type. Yeah, I actually do have a take here. Um, yep. And so just to echo what you're saying, my opinion is that Montez, I actually don't know that the team wanted to trade Montez Sweat. But when the Chicago Bears came in with as high a pick as they did, it is an expiring deal. You go, hey, we could lose him. Go ahead, take pick 35 or 38 overall, whatever that may end up being. From the Bears' perspective, I have no idea. I think they should continue getting worse. Montez is going to make them better. But how much better? Not enough to make the playoffs. And now he has all the leverage. That's a weird move by the Bears. We had to take that pick. Had to. Um, Chase Young. Even if that stuff is half true, Mm -hmm. the addition by subtraction, the freelancing, which people have seen, let's not pretend that we haven't seen it. There are moments where he over pursues, where it seems like he's doing his own thing and he's so talented that sometimes it works. And then you look at his numbers and you go, he's having a good year. Statistically, yes. But if it's half true, KDOT, no individual is above the team. I would much rather have somebody that's fundamentally disciplined that stays in the lane, right? Because it is about the chemistry on the defensive line that will help us moving forward. So there could be some energy of, okay, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne don't need to worry about what's going on on that side right next to him where Chase, as talented as he is, is freelancing a little bit. Now, does this fix the secondary? Absolutely not. That has nothing to do with it. But there is something to be said about team chemistry. And if it is true, that Chase Young is doing his own thing. Well, by the way, just in team sports, that is huge. That is important, and that can negatively affect a defense. We'll find out in the coming weeks whether that's true or not. If the defense starts playing better, I think there's truth to it. If the defense plays as well, if not worse, well, he should have just continued doing his thing because it was working. What do you make of that, Kato? I could say that even if I agreed with everything you said, and I don't necessarily disagree with anything you said. Um, number one, I've been you've heard me talk about the freelancing on the on the front four and them not playing as a team for two years now. Mm-hmm. Ever since we've been doing the podcast, it's been a criticism for me. Yeah. Um, it's not just Chase that's freelancing. I need people to understand and realize that he might be more egregious than anybody else. He's the most he's talented not, freelancer. I give him that. But he right. but everyone has Look, they play as a team sometimes, and then every once in a while, when you when they're getting punched in the mouth, everybody just let's try to get there. But I do think that more than anything, that's a grand indictment on the coaching staff than any individual player. We agree. If you see a guy that's out there freelancing, why the fuck is he on the field? Mm-hmm. Why is he there? Like we, we saw at the end of the Lavar Arrington era here, where it all went to shit because they're like, you're not freelancing. We're you got to play within the system. But then you also, but then you also have situations where certain coaches will allow a guy to freelance if you think you're getting the best out of it, and you scheme other dudes to do that. Uh, Troy Polamalu, as far as the safety, one of the greatest safeties that we ever seen play. Most of the times on defense, when he was out there, no one knew what he was doing. Like, do you hear the stories from all the guys on defense? They're like, "Polly, how did how did you know to to jump the line?" God told me. He used to literally say that. 
Yeah, yeah. Got, I, I got, mean, but, th- but that is an example of a guy that is already in an elite defense that can do his own thing. And the coaches totally actually, they get credit because they recognized that that was actually the right thing. But I'm saying in your right case, or exactly. wrong, it means you're not doing enough. Fair if enough. I got to hear another person in the organization saying, I really hope the chase, you mean chase is going to a great opportunity and I'm sure that he'll thrive there. Why the fuck wouldn't he thrive here? It's on you. Like if he needed, if he's going to go there, so he's not the star. So maybe they'll keep him in the system. Fred Warner won't allow him to be in the, be out of the system. You got, uh, it's going to be coaching to your point. Come on. So like at the end of the day, so like this is still the same coaching staff. So I don't necessarily know if I trust them. What, where well, well, I just wanted to quickly say where I do think about the chemistry aspect of things was listening to Deron Payne, Antonio Gibson, and Jonathan Allen when they were interviewed after the trade took place. Have you reached out? No, none of them did. And is it a business? Yes, it is a business. Stuff like that. It, K dot. It's a part of it. I, I, I think it is so. a part of it. I, look, the the I always get a little leery, especially with watching our history of this. Is all the shit comes out after somebody leaves. Which mm-hmm. it happens, but that's it that's always be feels, true in most places. Too. I get it. It always feels a little, especially dirty here. It, like yeah. to me, there's always a tinge of like, yeah. I don't, I don't put a whole lot of stock in all that. I do think, once again, I think that Chase is. If you can just look at him, you can see Chase is one of those dudes that you have at work that is loud and bombastic, and sometimes mm-hmm. it doesn't work for everybody. Like sometimes you just, hey, dude, you're not even here at the start of training camp most years. And I also think back training. to the stinger. It was very confusing as to what was going on. He's held right. out a game. He says he's ready. He is ruled out. You can say a workplace like, thing. Sometimes you got a number of noise. things. Right. right. Point being, this week we're taking on Mac Jones, Ramondre Stevenson. The Patriots average less than 100 yards on the ground. They have Kendrick Bourne, out. Mario Douglas, <laughs> and uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, who caught a touchdown last week, but it was one catch, three yards. Touch. Right. So if we're getting back to the X's and O's as far as the right. players and the matchups, right? All right. Let's say I'm going to get, let's give Jack Del Rio, hey, you got a team oriented group now. Everyone's Great. bought it. Everyone's, Everyone's going to do what they're supposed to do. Right. This is your mother freaking opportunity. Oh, see, I'm, this is going to come up. No. I'm trying to sense myself. Sorry. No. Say this it. Is your, say it. This is your motherfucking opportunity. Thank you. Please continue. To make shit happen. We talk about this year being the year of no excuses. This Patriots offense isn't good. The number one guy that you just named, Kendrick Bourne, if I'm not mistaken, is still out with a concussion injury from the end of the last game. There's a good chance he's not fucking playing this week, right? That is correct. Look, he's missed the last few practices. Uh, none of their running backs are running over four yards of carry. Or uh, that's De- that's Devontae Parker, excuse me. Oh, Devontae, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's um, Devontae. Uh, Kendrick's going to play. Kendrick's going to play. All right, whatever. One of the two. Either one of them, whatever. Um, They're not A.J. Brown. You shouldn't be getting fucking lit up. Mac Jones, nine touchdowns, eight interceptions. His look like absolute dog shit at times. He had a pretty good performance. Um, I think it was like, the Miami game. His, his performance wasn't terrible, but they just didn't have enough to get it done. This team has only scored 21 points once this season. Once. Like, they, they, they're they not great. So, like. Yeah. <laughs> scored over 21. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just making sure I check my math on that. Wait, so hang on. Just, maybe maybe Kendrick Bourne is hurt. I don't know why I it's Kendrick not showing hurt. Hurt. I think he is hurt, actually. So yeah, I got no, tripped up. Devontae, I looked at the injury report. At the You're end right. of the last game, Parker and Bourne did That's catch. right. Okay, yeah, yeah. They both ended up getting hurt. My apologies yeah, to those good. watching so far. But yeah, I was looking just at the injury report. Anyway. Uh, okay, so even more week. reason. It, it even so more reasons. reason. Right. This that this should be a good game. Now, here's the thing. Going into this game, if you're looking at the defense, is there anything like a... Should Mac Jones have a career day against us? Probably. Mm-hmm. Should Kendrick Bourne, if he's if it's at, or Devontae Park? No, no, I and think the, But the only two guys that really scare me as far as on the offense is their uh their tight ends, Hunter Henry and Mike Isaki. Um, like those guys are probably the big, but usually they're in there to more block than anything else. They spread the ball around. That's just because Mac Jones is trying to get the ball down the field. This is your opportunity for the Washington defense to really show out. They don't have any stars. You don't have the A.J. Brown you got to worry about who looked like a god last week, right? You mm-hmm. don't have – even the Atlanta Falcons, they don't have a B. John Robinson. They don't have a Drake London. They don't have a Kyle Pitts. There's no one on this offense that should scare you at all. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, I'm very curious to see. Um, and we also face a familiar opponent, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, who's in the backfield for 
the New England Patriots, and he's had a bit of success against us in the past as a member of the Dallas Cowboys, but he's been behind Ramondre. So, like, there really isn't anything on this offense that should scare you. It comes down to the defensive line, comes down to that secondary that has not been good all year. Can you stop these guys? Because if you can't, I mean, chalk up losses the rest of the way, honestly, you can't stop anybody. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's that side of the ball. But I expect that we'll be able to stop the run. I think the Patriots are going to try and run, though, by the way. Um, and then we'll see how the passing defense does. But I do expect that Mac Jones is going to have to be the one to beat us. Uh, any final thoughts before we flip sides of the ball, Kato? Um, No, not really. I mean, this is just I look. If you're watching this game outside of your local areas, you're probably not going to get it. And the D team is going to be commentating. This is not an exciting one. Yeah, there you go. Well, I mean, looking at the slate overall, none of them are. Anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about one of the bright spots last week, which was Sam Howell and this commander's offense against this New England Patriots defense. So, KDOT, on this side of the ball, what are your expectations? This side, once again, who's showing up, right? So, like, I look at, so when it comes to, there, if there's one person I respect, Marlon, more than anybody in the league, it's Bill Belichick and what he thinks of defensively. Um, What he does better than most, it, it's it's akin to, um, it's kind of simple when you think about it, but what he does is he takes away, he does everything he possibly can to take away the thing that you want to do. And it tells you if you're going to beat us another way, then you're going to beat us another way. There's no worries. He'll take that loss there. Right? So if you look at this Washington team, what would that mean for us? We haven't really shown that we can run the football. So what he's going to do is try to throw everything he possibly can to Sam Howell. The here's where your issues are. Sam Howell, um, the new England Patriots blitz quite a bit. Sam Howell against the fifth Blitz highest been, in the league, fifth highest rate in the league. Sam Howell has been pretty fucking good against the Blitz. You look at the Blitz last week against Philadelphia. I'm sorry, Philadelphia's a better team than New England. They've got a little more talent. 12 of 14, a touchdown, quarterback rating of 132. Mm -hmm. Do I think that Bill, do I give Bill Belichick more credit for being able to disguise some things a little bit better than anything that they have in Philly? Probably, but there's still a talent deficiency, right? So, like, at the end of the day, if I look at that and I say that Bill Belichick is going to do everything he possibly can to try to take away the pass from us, right? Mm -hmm. Then it goes back to something that I've been criticizing as far as his team goes, which is the running game. Um, it, it, in my opinion, which is non-existent because they don't know how they don't know what formations to run out of. They telegraph fucking everything. Um, I think you're going to have some abilities depending on how they're going to have the DBs sort of play. Mm -hmm. to potentially run there'll be running lanes i think they're going to be pursuing like a motherfucker um if we can't do that and it's just the sam howell's arms he can still beat them <laughs> like, that's the other thing it's like if it's just on sam howell he can still beat these dudes now i will say that the things to look out for is like in the last three games new england's had five turnovers look out for that if you're looking at things defensively they've got some guys like if they're, we're talking about name recognition the defense clearly has certain guys who probably have more name recognition than some of the dudes on offense Jabril Peppers we're familiar with that name Christian Gonzalez if you watched our draft show you're familiar with that name JC Jackson who was a shitty corner in uh in LA comes back home to New England he hasn't shown out or anything just yet but he's waiting for his return to form game and he's got a coach that's usually going to get the best out of him defensively as far as the, the linebackers, the defensive line, Matt Judon, names you should know, he's got four sacks this year. And Christian Barmore, three sacks this year. Yeah. Um, This is a team that's going to be able to, they're going to blitz. Hopefully, if I'm Washington, I look at the exact same game plan I had in Philly. And I'm probably going to do the same thing. Because I don't think we could. I don't so this run-pass balance, you, you don't see it changing this week? I'd like to see it change. I think it'd be a better recipe for success if it did change long term for us. Okay. I still don't. I haven't seen us do enough stuff under center or seen enough plays in the playbook under center to make me think it's going to change much. So if that's not going to be the case, then you basically roll out the exact same thing you did. Get the ball out of Sam's hands as quickly as humanly possible. OK. And, and of course, you had mentioned uh, first round pick Christian Gonzalez. He will not be playing, but. Oh, he, really? oh yeah, yeah, he's been on IR for oh, uh, right. a little yeah, bit right, there. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, because we were talking about the whole Emmanuel Forbes Gonzalez thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and how and just to be clear, guys, uh K Dot and I share this opinion, just speaking to coaching once again. If Christian Gonzalez were to have been our draft pick instead, we're looking at the exact same thing over here. That's how poorly we think of the coaching. Um 
I also don't think the run pass ratio is going to change. I think Eric Bieniemy has decided this is what he's going to do. Listen to some national shows this week. They're already talking about Eric Bieniemy as a coaching candidate. The moment the Raiders fired Josh McDaniels, for example, why? Because Sam Howell looks good. So it, it's already feeding into uh, what we were talking about. Where do you think Eric Bieniemy is doing this so that he's a hotter name? And it, it looks like it's happening. Uh, so I do anticipate that Eric Bieniemy will continue to allow Sam Howell to cook, which also means Sam Howell is susceptible to getting sacked. Let's hope that we can put together two straight good offensive games. I believe that would be the first time all season. So we're looking for that consistency. Okay. And we're going to see if that ends up happening. It is up to Sam Howell against Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick historically has, and always has been good against young quarterbacks. So why don't we go ahead and jump over to the predictions over here, KDOT. So we have the Patriots favored by three. Now this game is at new England. So whenever you see a home team favored by three, Typically indicates a bit of a toss up, but Patriots by three over under is 41. Need a score, need a winner, need a player of the game. 21 20 commanders. Player of the game, Sam Howell. Okay. Is he throwing three touchdowns? I see three touchdowns from him. Wow. That would be, hey, by the way, there would be a ton of excitement over here if Sam Howell were to have thrown four last week, three this week. I can't remember the last time we had a QB play what seven oh, throw the ball 70 times <laughs> yeah i could see that i could see that um so i i think the defense is going to play a whole lot better i do because so you're, you're going in. against an offense what'd you say i uh, sorry I, sh I shouldn't cut you off i was just i was wondering if you were bought in that like the addition uh oh the addition by subtraction thing to an extent but i don't know Right. I mean, like, I, I do think that there is something to having good team chemistry. And I think it has become abundantly clear with the different puzzle pieces I'm putting together that uh, there is clearly some sort of chemistry issue that existed. Will it suddenly turn things around? It can. It could be a bit of a spark, but I think we're just playing a very, very bad offense. Um, so I do expect the defense to play better. And in the coming weeks, we'll see if it actually is better or worse without these guys. Um, but... I do think that Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots are going to end up having a nice game, but I just don't see this idea of a Ron Rivera led team beating a Bill Belichick squad at New England, 1916 Patriots player of the game. I don't know. It's probably going to be like Demario Douglas. Like, I mean, it's just going to be something random where you're just like, how are we not stopping these guys? Like, it makes no sense, but here we are. Like, I think it is really going to be one of those things. Uh, very unfortunate, very frustrating, sort of a slow grind, similar to that Giants game where we ended up losing to Terod Taylor. Like, very frustrating. Um, but only a three point loss. Defense plays better. You you look at some positives and we continue on the inconsistency train. That is where I am at KDOT. I will also say this. If we lose by more than two scores, mm -hmm. I could see a very interesting Monday. I will say that because if the defense doesn't turn around against this team in particular, this team, right? We talk about Bill Valachek on the defensive side of things. I get it. That could be tough. That could be a struggle. They've played against a number of incredible offenses. And yeah, they've given up some points, but sometimes they've played well too. If this defense gives up 30 plus again, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a very interesting Monday in my opinion. I don't know how it couldn't be. So you're saying specifically the defense. Does that mean that you're calling for there's potential to Jack Del Rio's fire? Or are you actually saying the head guy's gone? Oh, head guy's gone too. You lose by more than two scores to this Patriots team. Yeah. I don't think they're going to make a move. If I had to put money on it, I don't think, I, I think even if we lost 52 to seven, which I was looking at oh. that happened in 2007. Um, <laughs> I remember that game. Oh Jesus my gosh. Christ, that was rough. Chris Cooley caught a touchdown <laughs> that day. I still remember that. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Um, I actually, there's a part of me, and I don't know what segment would this would be. I'm just going to, I don't want to keep it short. I actually think that Ron doing what he did with the Montez Sweat Chase Young thing, I think him actually admitting that he got the they got the analytics guy involved even before he's supposed to technically be working for us. Mm -hmm. Um I think it might have endeared him a bit to this ownership group. Cause I, I do think that there is a certain element when it comes to ownership that is like, are you for the team? 
or are you more individual? And I don't think anyone could look at what they did with the Montez at Trace Young thing. If they did have control and not say that they put the team first or at least the future of the organization first. Sure. Um, And I think that might buy him some time. It might, but here's the thing. So it, let's say they are on the same page, which I think you can cast a bit of doubt there too, but I, I let's say they are, right? Yeah. Then, uh, like wholeheartedly on the same page. Um, that would also involve Ron saying, hey, this defense is better when we have all these guys bought in. There's clearly some sort of disruption going on here. You got 30 plus against this team. Then there, it is so much deeper than just, it's not just the two defensive ends you traded. Right. Then it becomes, okay, uh, Ron gave you an opportunity against the second worst offense in the NFL in terms of points per game. The second worst. You went against the worst of the New York Giants, who averaged 11.8. You actually upped that average when you gave it 14. You give up 30 plus to the New England Patriots, averaging 14.8 points per game. Yeah, there's, I don't care how much goodwill you got. That's a problem. So Ryan Kerrigan for defense coordinator. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Cool. We we came up with the name. Uh, why don't we go ahead and jump over to the comment mailbag where we have two different videos that uh, we had. So we have, therefore, two different sets of comments, beginning with the 3138 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. That recap video beginning with Tony. We got two comments from Tony. Uh, first one. If our running backs average 2.25 yards per carry on 24 totes for 54 yards, what does the rest of their stat line look like? Answer, then proceed. Okay, cool. So we have to answer that first. Thanks, Tony. Tony, excellent comment, by the way. Please stop here. Please answer the question, then continue to read my comment. Go ahead, KDOT. I want what? <laughs> you, want, you want the question? Okay. If our yeah, running backs averaged 2.25 yards per carry, okay? Uh-huh. 2.25 on 24 touches. For 54 yards. Okay, so that's what it is. What does the rest of their stat line look like? I I would say they have a lot of catches. I I, I don't I don't know. I, I I think he's saying if you extrapolate that a little bit, like if how you extrapolate, does the what does the look? offense look like? Yeah, I don't less yards for Sam because he's throwing less because that's a lot of carries for us. <laughs> it's, I think that's it. Twenty-four totes is a lot. It's a um, lot of carries for I just once again I don't think the running game is broken. It's just broken. I don't think it's a matter of how many carries you get. I think we've we've gone beyond the just run for the sake of running. Mm-hmm. It's they're not. If you're running for the sake of running, it's to keep a defense honest to set up your passing. But, but but the point is, you're getting after the idea of okay, fine. If the run is not working, you still get the ball in the hands of Brad Robinson of Antonio Gibson. No, no, you don't. No, no, it's not the point. This is what. This, I've been trying to like clarify this the last two weeks, and I, I don't think I'm doing a good enough job of it. There's one thing to run for the sake of running if you're setting up something else. Okay. They're not because the runs are so easily telegraphed that nothing really comes of it. We know when you're in a run formation, we know what side you're going to run to. Okay. It doesn't do anything. So like at the end, so it's not effective in any way, shape or form unless Robinson just breaks one. Which is okay. what we're hoping for. But, which he's done. He's and done. It, I'm not denying that. But, there's, yeah. but, the, but the idea that the run's helping anything else, it's not in its current form. One less play for Sam Howell to get sacked. Anyway, I'm going to continue with Tony's comment. I'm asking because this was the Chargers rushing stats from the game last night. So, again, that yep. was the game against the Chicago Bears. But instead of accepting this inefficiency, the Chargers got the ball to their best running back, playmaker Austin Eckler in space to finish with seven catches for 94 yards and a touchdown. The point is competitive teams adjust. They understand running is still important despite its efficiency. They understand getting the ball to their playmakers by any means increases their chances of winning. Have we figured that out yet? And to an extent, I would say yes, because our playmakers are Terry McLaurin, are Jahan Dodson, and we are doing what we can to get them the ball. You could see it in the targets uh, last week, Tony, right? 12 targets for McLaurin, 10 targets for Jahan. Uh, both had good games. Both had a touchdown. Like, I think we are. I personally would like to see Brian Robinson get the ball more. I would like them to not telegraph stuff. I hope you're wrong about that, K. Dot. Like, I would... I would obviously like for the run pass to be better and not telegraph the run. But I think regardless, I think regardless, it does help Sam Howell out and it does soften up the defense a little bit. I'm not just talking physically. I'm talking they have to guess a little bit right now. They don't have to guess. 
And, and that to me is frustrating. I, I'm going to say, me and you, you know what we're going to, we might have to do like a film breakdown one these weeks. Like, okay, uh, we'll, we'll do, do it. like all 22. That would actually uh, be a lot of fun. We can go ahead and do that. To Tony's point, I will say this. Antonio Gibson is not being used, utilized properly within the offense. But I also think that they just need to, they need to have more looks in getting the uh, playmakers involved. It mm -hmm. can't be if a playmaker is out there that we clearly see as a playmaker Everyone knows exactly what's about to happen with him, and it eliminates his ability to do anything. Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, we got another comment from Tony. Shout out, Tony. More games are lost than won. That is true. We know that. We have yep. known that for quite some time. The three plays that made this difference. Number one, Howell's interception thrown to Reed Blankenship. Number two, pick one of McLaurin's critical drops. So that's actually um, three plays right there. Uh, and then Jahan's reviewed fourth down drop in the final minutes, which I thought was absolute horseshit. But there we are where they changed their mind while Darius Slay was hurt. Uh, and we're like, actually, you know what? What if we called it incomplete? How would we feel about that? Oh, if who gives a fuck about the commanders? Just go ahead and do that. Uh, that was that was BS. The rest were terrible. They were terrible. Were terrible. Like yeah, I think we do a good job on this podcast of not ever talking about the refs and being like, hey, this is yeah. what we can do better. This is what we can do worse. We but that was negativity about the team. That was objectively bad, though. Yeah. Um, appreciate the comments there, Tony. And then we got Vindo. Shout out Vindo. Yeah. Tough loss. Wish we could play like this every game. Definitely fixed with that dots and catch. My goodness, kind of sabotage Ron Little, but on to the Pats. P.S. Love the way Howell plays. One sack can really show you how good he is. Could have put up 500 passing yards if we had some catches and ran the ball on fourth. And one, I don't know what EB was thinking. Oh, fourth and one. Excuse me. Ran the ball in fourth and one. I don't know what uh, Eric Bieniemy was thinking. And that, again, would have been the situation where Brian Robinson, it's gun. He's in the backfield. He moves wide. And we throw an incompletion to the sideline. We should have enough confidence to run the ball in fourth and one. Yeah, I think that is. When we know when Brian Robinson lines up in shotgun on this side in a run situation. We'll do the all 22 kid. I've, I've, heard, I've heard just about enough of you. Okay. Um, and then we go over to Jay Lee, who replied <laughs> to the window comment. I think this is the ceiling for you guys this season, but maybe next season you get more talent and can compete. We need an offensive line. I, I do think we need an offensive line because even when you look at the PFF grades, a lot of people saying the praises of Chris Paul, for example, it depends on whether you believe PFF or not. There, there are a lot of questions around PFF. Okay. But it is a source that you could choose to use. Um, the offensive line didn't grade great. Last week, it's more to your point, K. Dot, that we said the offensive line. We, a lot of us, not you, said the offensive line played well because Sam Howell got the ball out quicker, right? So that is to your point that we just need to move the ball quicker. I feel like that Jack Nicholson uh, departed gif. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Clip that. What yes, we just did. Yeah, it yeah, is. That. Eric, set them up for success, bud. K. Dot, when we start running the ball, I need you to clip when we were both like. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we're going to throw that on there. And now we got one more comment. This is from JR10 is the future. Not even three minutes into the podcast and fool on the left is swearing every other sentence, bro. Give it a break up your censorship game. Nobody want to hear all that. Appreciate the comment because we always do. But here's the thing, JR, and I'm going to take this one. The guy on the right. Fuck off. This is how we do things. This is our show. We appreciate you stopping by. We don't anticipate you coming back. If you do, great. But this is the way it's going to be. Um, and if you don't, that's also okay. There's plenty of awesome Commanders coverage out there. You have one of many to choose from. You have many to choose from, and you have many to indulge in. If this isn't one of them, that is absolutely fine. We do things our way here. Okay, Doc, go ahead. I hate the fact that you, Guy, got into my head, and I tried to self-censor, and Ahmed had to remind me that this is who I am. I curse. Um, if you look at any study, I'll point to the CNN article, why swearing is a sign of intelligence. Just because you can't wrap your fucking brain around it, you goddamn moron. Um, or because it hurts your fragile little ears. Maybe we need to have earmuff moments. I don't know. How about you jump back in the comments if you feel like and just see what it is you'd like me to do to help your fragile fucking psyche and me saying these, oh my God, so harsh words. Nobody wants to hear that. Fuck you. Fuck off. I don't give a shit if you watch this again or not. Unless you have an ability to make us money doing this, then I'll listen to criticism. But outside of that, go fuck yourself. Anyway, um, we do appreciate the comment, though. And if you do choose to come back, you're always welcome. Just Analytics. to be clear. Just to be clear. But the cursing, it's part of the show. 
It's part of the show because we care deeply about the squad. Um, let's go over to the other video where we have two. No, we have five. Where, where did two come from? Oh, this is the second video. That's where the two came from. Anyway, uh, let's go over to Tech VOF, Tech VOF. I don't know. Um, this is the trade video, by the way. So he goes, Chase going to the 49ers makes it harder for the Eagles and Cowboys to advance in the playoffs. Appreciate the comment there. Certainly hope so. It would be pretty awesome to see Chase with a huge sack against one of those teams in the postseason to eliminate a divisional rival, which would be awesome. On the subject of Chase and the Eagles and Cowboys, Look, I with the amount of money tied in to the defensive line that San Francisco has, I anticipate this being a rental, not a long term thing. Who knows where he goes after this game? Not. I don't know. Um, maybe back here. Maybe. Never. <laughs> maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. I actually hit Baltimore. Look out for look out for Chase Young and Baltimore. I think it'd be good. A, a lot of a lot of Ravens fans. Whenever I look at uh, X or Twitter or whatever it's called these days, um, a lot of Ravens fans want Chase. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see what happens there. Um, then we got Vindo. Shout out Vindo. True. Wish we got a full season for Chase Young, though. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice. But if the team chemistry thing is true, okay, I'm going to continue to say if true, because I don't know. But if it is, then I think this was objectively the right move, because I personally value that a heck of a lot more than most people. Um, because I do think that sometimes sacrificing an individual talent for the collective is necessary. And this may be one of those moments there. NFL is full of incredible players. I mean, this is top end talent across the board. I would rather have a unit that is fully bought in together. I don't know that the chase young stuff is true, but if it is, then I think it was the right move. If it's not, well then just even more on the coaching staff, but what else is new? Okay. Okay. I don't agree with getting rid of Chase Young. I almost don't agree with getting rid of Montez Sweat. I don't think this coaching staff got the best out of him. And I also don't think they did enough to get him to buy in. Uh, If you're going to do tough love, whatever, I, where is it? The Chase Young's benched. Where is it that Mm. we, we, where is it that we see that you're really trying to, what we saw from Jack Del Rio is him taking every opportunity to throw Jamin Davis under the goddamn bus in the. Oh, media. I remember that. And and we criticized Del Rio for that too. We did. And we even talked about it with the Emmanuel Forbes stuff that that they our fan base don't know how to develop talent properly, and to me that is the travesty. He's the number two overall pick, and you just got him away for peanuts. That's a failure. That's true. That is true, and I will not argue against that. I will not argue against that. Uh, then we go over to Jess Anto, 3438. Longtime listener, first time commenter. Welcome. Hey. Welcome to the comment mailbag. Appreciate it, Jess Anto. Love the show, guys. Emotion and logic. I think the trades are the best for all parties. At first, I thought they had gotten excellent compensation for sweat. Then the young trade dropped and it took me a step back. The more I thought about it, the more I think it was a fantastic move. Hmm. Something hasn't been right with Young for years. Even before the injury, something was off after his rookie season. I don't know whether he's mentally checked out of football or what's wrong. I watched the video compiled by Ref the District. Shout out Ref the District. Very good. Um, Absolutely. You know, JR is the future 10. If you're still listening, they're great. They are. You can listen to them also. They're very, very good. I, uh, I watched the video compiled by Ref the District of his play in the Philly game, and it is pretty wild whether he wanted to be here or not. I think they just avoided a huge media storm on his contract, hitting a GM just walking into the door. Oh, good point. Regardless of how much we liked either of them and how long they have been here, they were going to command, that was in quotes, top dollar at end of the season. At the end of the day, their play didn't add up to the money they were going to want, and we just lost two DNs on the 30th ranked defense in the NFL. If Snyder was still running this shit, they would have walked after a couple franchise tags, unproductive seasons with no compensation in return. I like where the team is heading. We might finally have a franchise QB. Our front offices is making big boy moves and Snyder is an afterthought. I'm going to watch the rest of the season for Howell and the growth of the offense. Also to see who else on the defense is worth retaining. Unfortunately, Allen had been playing hurt all year, but there are four rookies to watch and see what they can do. You got me fired up, Jesse, to 34, 38. I really appreciate First off, awesome first comment. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. First comment. Really appreciate it. Thank you for listening all this time. Um, and the level of optimism, Kate, I thoroughly appreciate and enjoy here. Appreciate the comment. Um, both can be true. 
Mm-hmm. But I think what we both what I said as far as Chase Young and all that shit could be true. But it could also be true that it's best for all parties right now. What I'd say is that even if it is best for all parties right now, what mm-hmm. needs to also get taken into consideration is this particular team with this particular coaching staff has a ceiling that even if it's better for them, still will not take them to where they need to fucking be. I agree. Wholeheartedly agree. Um, but but in terms of the pieces in place, and just Anto had mentioned the players, just Anto had mentioned the uh, owner, right? Those are reasons for optimism. Absolutely. And this idea that we are trading people before losing them for nothing, right? Like this is, there is some. It feels like there are adults there. in the room with a plan, which and doesn't even usually feel. moves yeah. from the front yeah. office. So, 100%. So, yeah. Uh, and then we go over to Blood Clot. Shout out, Blood Clot. Oh, gee. I don't think their new analytics guy, Eugene Shen, officially starts yet, but I guarantee they ran these trades by him first. They even said as much um, yep. as we would find out later on. Rivera mentioned analytics again in the post trade deadline presser. I don't think they make moves without talking to the VP of analytics guy. And in the end, neither of them were producing any rate of investment deserving of a 25 to 30 plus million a year extension. Maybe if they were hitting 18 and a half sacks a season, like Nick Bosa, I am a little worried and excited about these moves. It's appealing to any new head coaches that want to build rumblings of Belichick have been surfacing since Kraft is probably ready to move on. Whether that is a good idea. I don't know better than Rivera. That's for sure. I think we can all agree. Bill Belichick is a better head coach than ron rivera just given track record and things of that nature um but also i mean blood clot makes a good point that roi in terms of the sack totals i mean these are first round picks these are guys that are going to command a lot of money because they're at a premium position were we realistically going to hold on to them i don't know and if we did depending on what that contract amount was did we overpay that's also possible so again the trades hurt the day of they look a little bit better as time passes, but you also miss the talent. Both sides, I can see merit too. Okay, Doc. And then, um, do right now as as that's the thing is like I'm not gonna go as far as to say that like now the defense is in the hands like the coaching staff and players that really want to be here or whatever. This has been your team for yeah. four years. Um, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, they were your guys. Them playing or not playing has been up to you. I don't – if they go out and they – if they win out the rest of the fucking season and the defense is playing lights out, then okay, assholes, why don't you figure that out sooner? Like, there's not going to be – you're not getting a kudos from me. They're not getting a fucking kudos from me. They're just not. Uh, and then we go over to the Hawk TV, 3339. Appreciate the comment. This is the final comment. Uh, Blood Clot, I think you had one more. I don't know if it was deleted. This happens with Blood Clot sometimes. I don't know if the comment gets deleted or if – Anyway, um, but the Hawk TV 3339, appreciate the comment here. The team I root for has to take another L. We drafted a hometown kid at number two overall, and it didn't work. Also, we moved on from sweat. The front office and coaching failed them, led by Ron Rivera, and it is beating the drum that KDOT has been beating this entire episode when it comes to these trades and even on the uh, recap episode. So I, yeah, ultimately, you know, if they're coached better, Look at all the talent on this line, man, or was on this line. It should have worked. It really should have worked. I don't know how it doesn't. When Mike Tomlin looks at Chase Young and goes, holy shit, we're never going to be bad enough to take a guy like you. Mike Tomlin, very respected head coach in this NFL, says that. You know you fucked up. That's the reality of the situation. We did. All things considered, I'm on the side of, okay, fine, at least we got something. But uh, And the team chemistry thing, if true. But man. It's a it's an excellent point in KDOT. It's one you've been making this whole time. This really should have worked. The thing I keep always going back to in my head is what if Micah Parsons was here? Do we think he's Micah? I don't know. He might be. That's but he the, might the, be. The, the, but, the thought that but you I don't have know. to take a moment to think about is, is a the point. failure. Yeah. Yeah. The like fucking a failure. <sighs> this team, this coach staff, this podcast. It's District Divided, a DC sports podcast, more specifically a Washington Commanders podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. JR is the future 10. Mm-hmm. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on the video. Let's have a conversation. 
hit the notification bell and Kate up. Jara, share this motherfucking shit, bitch. Please do. Please do. We're always looking for more people in the District of Ida family. Thank you guys so much for listening. After the pod begins right now. And we're also coming up pretty close to a hard stop here, KDOT. Um, but I didn't see what time it was. I know. I know. Time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. Because we had our pre-pod talk. We did. We did have our pre-pod talk. We'll we'll keep that in-house for the we time will. being. But, but uh, man, oh, man. I had a great Tuesday. No, Wednesday. Oh, that's nice. I, I was going to say that, that was the trade deadline. Yeah, <laughs> it no, seems it like you didn't have a great Tuesday. What happened Wednesday? Wednesday, I spent almost the entire day in a movie theater. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're home. I felt so good. Uh, shout out to Alamo, Rhode Island Avenue in D.C. I as love always. the Alamo Draft House, man. My guys. I went and saw Killers of the Flower Moon for the second time. Okay. Um, Better the second time. My there opinion. you go. Had me some mozzarella sticks, a bucket of popcorn, and a Coke. And then when the lady came over to refill my Coke, she's like, do you want more popcorn? I was like, eh, I guess it's free. And I ate too goddamn much, and it was bad. That that part was bad. But uh, then I left out, went and had dinner um, somewhere, and then came back and watched, which is in limited run, and I feel lucky to have seen it in the movie theater because it'll be out in on Netflix next week, David Fincher's The Killer, uh, Ooh, starring Michael David Fassbender. Fincher. All right. Fassbender. All right. It is awesome. It's just so awesome. Wow. I can't wait to see it again. I like I'm I, but I'm so happy I saw it in the theater. Like in all of DC, there are only two theaters showing this movie. And I think they'll stop showing this movie uh by next week. Why? It's a Netflix flick. So like oh, they're not okay. even telling you the box office numbers. It's it's a Netflix release that they did a limited theater run because it's Fincher. And it could make. I was going to say, point. okay, yeah, yeah. Um, even me, if like if my scheduling worked out, I'd go see it in the theater again before it becomes available on Netflix. Honestly, would you go Sunday one o'clock? Hmm? Sunday it might be a better use of my time. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope this team turns it around, man. Like I, I, I know we have our feelings on the uh, coaching staff, but do you know? Honestly, this is, so all right. Honestly, do I sincerely God. hope we turn this around? This of year, course. yes. Why? Why? Because I want the players to enjoy success. I want to, as a fan, enjoy watching on Sundays. And it is just better for the area. The vibes are much higher in general. For the long-term strategy, I guess there, there is the thought of tanking, et cetera, right? I'm because then saying, you get as high a pick. But yes, of course, I'm I not, want the players to turn it around. Of course. I'm not like, even saying tanking. I'm saying that there could be a scenario in which they win enough. I truly think what's not being taken into consideration, taking into consideration is that there could be... I think we're taking. It we talked about this with Scott Brooks. Completely. You remember that? We talked about this with Scott Brooks and the Washington Wizards. I brought it up where I said, if we make the playoffs, there is a chance Scott Brooks ends up picking up an extension. We're talking about something similar here. With no Rivera, extensions right? needed. He's got one more year. He, no, he will not get the other year. I think it's been abundantly clear. I think even local media said it that he needs to win a playoff game as well. We have how many losses? Five. Is it like if we you make the playoffs and you beat a surging Saints team? You got one year left on your deal. Okay, so you got the quarterback. The defense is surging. We have a dude that we know if you're ownership, we have a guy who was who listened to our analytics guy. Mm -hmm. We have a guy who was willing to sacrifice his own short term uh success for long term success if he believed in getting in the draft picks for as far as looking at the future. We have a known, co we look at the coaching pool that's out there right now and we say, well, Eric B we still think might be the best thing for the offense. Right. You don't want to get rid of that. All right. Maybe we come back and we get rid of the defense coordinator. He, he sounds like he, he he's a guy that'll play ball. Is there not a scenario at all in which you can comprehend Ron Rivera being the perfect guy for this ownership in far as installing what it is they need to install. Having your draft picks in here that you got from all these other places to give them a year. To give Eric Bianami another year before he steps into the position. Maybe even if you look at Ron Rivera, what's this? who's to say with everything that he's been through that he hasn't had a conversation with Josh Harris and said, yo, if I come back in one more year, I'm retiring. Give it to Eric. They could do that at the end of this year. Ultimately, that's not 
This isn't a situation where Ron's just going to be able to call his own shot here. Ownership is going to choose to do what they are going to choose to do. Are you telling me if we were to go to the playoff? This is such a long shot, by the way. But like, and that's the point is we're discussing an insane long shot that I don't think either one of us thinks is possible. Mm -hmm. And the only way I could see this being possible, by the way, you mentioned a surging Saints team. Not going to happen. It's going to be either San Francisco or Philly. Right. Like those seem like the two clear cut top two teams and the highest we're getting in this playoff race is seven. Right. So it's going to be one of those two. And the only one you can truly beat is Philadelphia because you've shown that you can hang with them. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's come down to the last. Isn't that? Yeah. So if you go to Philly and win. Right. We're surging. Then you're on board with Ron. staying. Well, because we just but then you look at it. Right. Like all of a sudden the team is playing really well. Do you know how many games we would have to win in our last few to even make a seven seed? Like, right. I, I like, guess maybe what I'm think about where you would actually gone. exist in no, that if, present. If we did that, then Ron maybe deserves the job long term. Maybe he deserves happen. an extension. It won't. I right. just if he loses part- to Philly in the playoffs, want him gone. See, like that's the thing. I like clean. Clean to me is it's ugly. It looks bad, and it's. <laughs> Easy to walk away from, right? It's like we're very close. If we let, give up say, 30 plus, we've talked about it. We give up 30 plus this Sunday. But like relationship wise, right? Like everyone, at least I know I had I have had a terrible time in relationships of letting go. Unless something terrible you and happens. millions of others, buddy. Right. But it's a, it, so like it's the you mean it's, it's the difference between like, oh, uh, shit, we're only having sex once every three weeks. You can clearly tell we're not quite happy. None of us are really in a situation where we really want to say goodbye. But then we get to the point compared to the bitch cheated on me and I'm over it. Like there's a there's a level of which it's like I want to cauterize. It's not Dan Snyder era and everything that has to do with it and just move on. Like to me, this is this this is evaluating and then moving the fuck. on. I think it is happening. I I I do think it is happening. The reason I'm even. Look, this is pure fantasy. The idea that we're this team is going to go to the divisional round of the playoffs is pure fantasy. There is no chance that happens. I will tell you that right now. All right. Well, let me also say this, though. I. That's what it would take. I don't know why this is. I don't know why this is. But it's one of those pit in my stomach feelings. Or not. It's just a gut. It's just gut feeling. I'm not going to say it's a pit. It's not. It's not sure. negative in that way. Yeah. I think the bar is a lot higher than everyone else as far as Ron's ousting. Okay. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. I I think it is a foregone conclusion at this point. He constantly, constantly shows he's passed it, unfortunately. But that's just the reality of the situation. Like, it, it's not been something new that popped up. Mm-hmm. Last year, he didn't know we could get eliminated. Last year, he went back to Carson Wentz. This year, with all the Chase Young stuff, with the, oh, um, I was waiting for the guy who puts up the images on the big board to show me that Devontae Smith, like, okay, they give him the fucking challenge flag. Let him throw it from the rafters. Like, I, I mean, like, what are we talking about here? This guy is clearly shown that he doesn't have it. So you would have to overcome the coaching, KDOT, to even get there. And it won't. I think we all know that they this team as good as it is you give ron any team yes, yes. yeah i don't know why i said that <laughs> um you you give it's got some talent uh it you does give have ron talent. just about any team it, it, there's a limit okay there's a ceiling i and i agree maybe not always the case but like it happens this happens i still think best case scenario by week they fire ron Eric gets the he gets three to, games. Three, he gets games. three games yeah. to see what it is we got. If the guys look like they're really four fighting games. for it, um, hire them. If the guys look like they're really giving it, hire them. If they're not, fire them. Here's the thing: if 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 I will, I'm still saying if Eric Bieniemy does not figure out the running game, I want him gone. And I know that that might not be that might actually be a detriment. Here, all right, I won't say that. If Eric Bieniemy doesn't get the running game gone, then I'd like to see him at least hire a run game coordinator. Like he needs, I need something to happen there. The um, irony of a former running back hiring a run game coordinator. It's not lost on me. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I, I feel there's a part of me that almost, 
when when the news dropped, I was in my uh the other podcast that I do thread because they were they were like, What the fuck are y'all? What's going on in Washington? Right. And I said, It's gonna be hilarious tomorrow or when Ron walks in and finds out that Montez and Chase are gone. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of that on social media. Yeah. Um and it's funny because you can see it. They're like, Oh, <laughs> Oh wow, we traded those guys. <laughs> Jason, who'd you say? Who's the other guy? Hmm. The only thing All I'll right. say is that like the the I respect it. The 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 moves that they made, I don't think they're right. I don't think, but in some weird way, I respect Ron a little bit more for making for pulling the trigger. Yes, of course. Right. I think I think again, the more as time passes, we've talked about the NBA model of selling. And we're not doing a full blown rebuild. The entire offensive side of the ball was untouched. Yeah. And then if there's this whole addition by subtraction thing, then if if that is true, and I keep saying if because we don't know, but if it is, if it's half true, it had to happen, K dot. And it is an unfortunate situation because Chase is supremely talented, but then it did have to happen. Yeah, so yes, a- you do get credit for yeah, you probably started the fire, but you also put it out, and there's always a mixed feeling about whether the person gets credit for that or not. But like the point is you're going to give now opportunities to people to make a name for themselves, to do it the way you want it done. If yeah. that wasn't happening before. Yeah, what I mean was more about it. like the Montez thing was you're sacrificing current results for future yeah. prospects. And that to me is like, I rarely see a coach do that. What I see is Jay Gruden desperately throwing a rookie Dwayne Haskins out there to try to save his ass. Like that's what I see typically. I don't see him saying, no, this is the best. This is the best move for the team. Yeah. Um, like that to me is just, I respect it to some degree. I, I just do like, there's, there's a part of me that's like, uh, all right, you're, you're actually giving a shit about the organization and the team, which has always been wrong. We've never not said that he's not a stand up guy. Um, yes, it, it, this is all just to be clear. Ron Rivera, the head coach, yeah. and, and it needs to be said again, right? Like, no, very respectable came in at the right time. Good Lord. We needed him. You know, we did. Let me ask you, but, I don't, I haven't seen this narrative yet. Sure. Was Dan Snyder providing cover for Chase? Um, I don't know that that has ever been discussed or confirmed, but given Dan's history, he yeah, always chooses at least it. one. Yeah. And the idea Chase, was a local, local guy, guy, top two pick, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. And Dan leaves. You got the stinger issue. They don't really want him back. Okay. Um, that, you know what there, there could, it's reasonable to think it's possible. Yeah, certainly. RG three, Dwayne Haskins, another local guy. That was a Dan Snyder pick. Very well documented. Even guys that we like, like Clinton Portis, of course, love Clinton Portis, but he was Dan's guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I just, I want to root for a normal football team. And we're getting that much closer. I think these trades sort of suggest that. So you got to get through this. I do feel that the last three weeks have driven me way. I am not as medium level as I have been just because of the craziness happening. It might just be an inherent subconscious thing that is afraid of this unknown. Yeah, because you know what's happening is you're get. It's a culture shock. It is actually a culture shock, and transitioning is difficult because your identity has been sewn into the previous. 20 plus years. So it feels That's weird. Right. So we're going to see what happens, but we will see you guys Monday at um, what is it, 8 a.m. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the uh, post game recap. Victory shades Monday. Hopefully they are <laughs> right. Here. Well, I predicted that yeah. <laughs> you did. So yeah, we'll see. I hope you're right, but we'll I see you too. Take it easy guys. Bye guys. In DC, we're just hoping that you listen. <laughs>